Hi, good evening. Welcome to the webinar tonight with GWiz Education, learning about GWiz, a training webinar for providers. So this webinar tonight is for if you're using our program or if you're just thinking about using our program, we hope we can answer some questions for you. Um, we're going to get, we, just to understand, we've got some um, attendees from pretty much all over the country. So we're, we also realize that y'all have a long day. So we're going to try to get started right away. But I do want to let you know that this webinar is being recorded. Tomorrow, if you want to review or next week you want to review this webinar, all you got to do is go to our homepage under training and support and the webinar training and it will be the top, it will be at the top of the list of the webinars listed. Right now it says registered, but by tomorrow it'll say watch. Um, also to let you know that under that same space, a lot of you look for that certificate of attendance after we finish the webinar. So you can show your um, coaches or whoever that you came to this webinar and that you tried to learn a little bit more about the curriculum. That link is not working right now because it's been turned off. But once we finish, that link will be turned on and you'll just need to do a real quick post assessment about the webinar. And as soon as you finish, you'll get a link for the certificate of attendance that you can download, print, and add it to your records. So Beth will probably show you again, but just so it, that's always the number one question. Where do I get that certificate of attendance? It is right there, so I'm reviewing it with you now. I can see that we still have people joining us, um, but again, we're being recorded. Um, so you'll be able to come back tomorrow and listen to the front part if any of you are joining later. Beth Smith is on the line also. Oh, my name is Sherry Mayberry. I think I said that. Sorry about that. <laughs> um, Beth Smith is on the other uh, on the line with us also, and she's going to lead the training tonight. Um, one other thing up in the top right hand corner of your screen, you will see a little box um, with, I believe it's like a hand. If you have a question, you can raise your hand or you can type in your question in the question box. I will be able to see that question. Nobody else can see that question. If it's something I think is important from the group, I will send out the answer to everyone. If it's just something that you need answered to, I'll send it to you privately. But throughout the webinar, if you've got a question, type it in that question box in the top right hand corner. If it's collapsed, there's a little orange arrow. You can uncollapse that box if you're not seeing it. Um, but otherwise, we're going to take it away and let Beth start the training. Good evening, everybody. I hope you had a wonderful day today. Um, my name is Beth Smith. I'm one of the partners with GWiz, and I am going to be leading this training. We have a lot to cover. Um, there's a lot about GWiz to learn for those of you who are customers and for those of you who are just interested in learning more about the curriculum. I appreciate everybody who filled out on the registration form information about what you're looking to learn. That helps me to target and hopefully I will hit on everything. But if I don't, like Sherry said, please type it in the question box because I am going to stop periodically throughout this to answer questions. Um, so please do not feel like there's a question that is silly or you shouldn't ask it because there is no such thing. Um, again, we're going to go really quickly. This is being recorded, like Sherry said, so don't worry. If you miss something, you can go back and you can listen again. I did look over the registration, and like Sherry said, we have people from all over the country. We also have, I would say, about half and half. Half of you who are using GWiz and half of you who are maybe not familiar with the curriculum but are looking to learn more about it and that's wonderful. Um, so those of you who are, are, are users of GWiz throughout this webinar, if you have feedback that you would like to share on the components, the lesson plans that you feel would help somebody who's thinking about using the curriculum, please by all means we would love to hear from you. So you can type your thoughts in that question box. Like I said, I'm going to I'm going to stop talking periodically so um, Sherry can read off some of your comments. But I'm at gwizeducation.com. Gwiz, if you don't know, is a company dedicated to family child care. That being said, we now have centers who are using our curriculum because they found that they love it too, which is awesome. Um, 
we are in all pretty much all 50 states i think at this point and we even have some international customers and we really really want to be here to support you uh, when we started gwiz back in 2012 we felt that there was a need for something for family child care because let's face it you wear a lot of hats you do a lot of things and you don't have a lot of free time and so we really felt that there was a need out there for a company to take notice and to create materials for family child care providers which is what we've done um, there are a ton of resources on our website and i will not have time to go through all of these tonight but i just want those of you who are not familiar with gwiz and even those of you who are customers who may not even know this exists that there are a lot of resources for you particularly under this educational resources tab um, we have a booklet called the learning environment in gwiz which talks about your important role in the learning environment for those of you who are evaluated using class or Fickers, this is one you would want to take a look at because it can really help you out in those areas to increase your scores, particularly the ones that involve engagement with children. This book about parent and family involvement is extremely important. It talks about diversity. It talks about involving parents. It talks about um, in, engaging with parents, not just like on a, on a oh, how was your day level, but how do you actually get them really involved in, in their child's life and help them recognize the important role they play in their as their child's first teacher? And then under resources for providers, there are things like developmental, whoops, excuse me, I went too fast, developmental checklists, there's health and safety and nutrition resources, there's helpful tools, which get, that's a whole lot of things. Um, information on disabilities and we don't have anything well 4th of July was the last thing we posted but there will be more things coming up for this fall um, in this section of our website so I just want to let you know that everything that I'm going to touch on right now I am not logged in I will log in because I'm going to show you the curriculum we're going to work our way through that but right now everything that you see if you're not a GWIS customer is available to you if you are a member of an association, you want to share resources with the other providers and let them know that all of this is here, please do. Um, if you're looking for your state alignments, because we are aligned to all state standards, including Head Start, and as well as um, approved in some states, and you can find that information under this tab. So I'm just touching on a few things right now that I won't have time to go into depth with on this webinar, but I want you to be aware that they, all of this is here. Um, so where are we going to start? Well, we're on the home page. There's a lot of information on here you can scroll down and see. But what I really want to start with is our user's guide. So um, under this tab about the curriculum, we have our user's guide. Our user's guide is like our training manual. I could spend a week going through this with you. And obviously, I don't have a week and I only have a few minutes. So what I want to do is highlight a few things. The user's guide is probably 80 plus pages in length, and you can download the entire guide um, and save it on your computer because everything that we do at GWiz is digital, so you could just save it to the computer. Some providers like to print it out and put it in a binder like a book. You're welcome to do that as well. But what we've done here is we've broken it in, into sections, okay? about your role, about individualization and authentic assessment, such as gathering anecdotal notes, um, the developmental areas that we cover in the curriculum and the learning indicators, we're gonna go there next. So what I want you to, to know is that this is packed full of information. And if you are a customer, you should have a copy of this on your computer or print it out. Your specialist, your coach might ask to see this and make sure you have this because this is the basis upon which the curriculum is built. So it's really important. Um, if you're thinking about GWIS, this is a great place to go to start reading about our philosophy, about our curriculum, about how we work. Um, so I just want you to know this is an incredible resource and it is not just for customers. This is open to anybody. So with that said, I want to look at the developmental areas and indicators. So one of the things that we do at GWIS that might be a little different than other curriculums you have used is we look at each experience that we plan in a very holistic fashion meaning 
you're not going to see in our lesson plans an art activity, a science activity, a social studies activity, because when you look at the activity or the experience in depth, you will see very quickly that one experience actually encompasses many different developmental areas. And we have code, we have pictures we use to help you connect those, which is really, really important when you're talking about assessment too. And I'll, I'll get into that in just a minute. So the 10 areas that we cover within the GWIS curriculum are language development, literacy knowledge, math knowledge, physical development and health, social and emotional development, social studies knowledge, creative arts, logic and reasoning, approaches to learning, and science knowledge. These are going to look so familiar to many of you. And the reason being when we created GWIS in 2012, we looked at state standards and national standards from across the country. And guess what we found? They all pretty much cover the same 10 developmental areas. They might call them a little bit something different, but in essence, the areas that they're covering and the skills within those areas are extremely similar. So these are the 10 that we write into the curriculum. This section of the user's guide actually takes you through each of the areas and it talks about, well, what is language development? And then in the pink box, well, what does it look like for different ages? And what is really important is this program symbol. So when we get into the lesson plans, we look at the lesson plans. Every experience that we put in there is going to have a whole series of pictures, like little picture codes like this. And if you see this one, you know that when you do that experience, you're going to address language development. And we take it a step further and we even drill down into the skills, but we are not going to go there right now. So what I want you to know from this section of the user's guide is it goes through every single area of development. So there's language, here's literacy, talks about what falls under literacy knowledge. Here's the symbol, the stack of books, right? Then we go on to math, which is a program symbol, which is the number one with the circle. Then we go into science, which is the magnifying glass. We have logic and reasoning, which is the question mark. And then we have approaches to learning, which is the smiley face and a very messy little guy who's having a great time, obviously. Um, we have uh, social studies, which is the world. We have social emotional, which is the heart. We have creative arts, which is the paintbrush. And we actually have a separate, sec a separate um, music note for things that are music. Physical development and health is the hand. And then we get into our learning indicators. So here's that language development symbol. See it? You're going to see this a lot in the lesson plans. Remember I said we had something called learning indicators? Well, learning indicators are skills. You're going to know those well from your assessment, right? I would guarantee that all of you are using some type of an assessment that has a skill that deals with spoken language, right? So in the GWIS curriculum, the skill we code we use for that is LD1, Language Development 1. So when I show you some uh, other documentation that comes with the curriculum, you can see how if you see LD1, you know that you're not just addressing language development, but you're addressing understand spoken language. So we've tried to connect these dots for you to make this much more streamlined. So it's not like you have the the developmental area over here and you have the skill over there and it's all convoluted and confusing. We've tried to bring it all together for you. Does that make sense? Those of you who are customers, um, any feedback on those picture codes? Does it help you? Does it help you connect to your assessment? Any feedback you'd like to share, feel free to type it in because um, I'm going to pause for questions anyway. So if you have feedback to share, type it in and Sherry can read it. Um, and and if anybody has any questions right now about either the 10 developmental areas that we cover in the curriculum or the learning indicators, um, please type it in and we'll, we'll discuss that right now before we move on. Um, there is one question, but it, everybody, if you've got a question, type it in now. Um, 
obviously everybody always asks, is this recorded? Yes, it is. It'll be up tomorrow. But the one question that I thought was interesting is there a way to download all the files instead of, because we have a lot of files in each unit. So they wanted to know if there was a way to download the uh, files in one zip file. Right now, our system can't handle a zip file. And there's so many files in each unit. When Beth gets to that, you'll see. But anyway, we can, but things change. So we'll keep looking at that as a possibility. But right now, that's not possible. But we do not have any questions typed in, Beth, so I think we're ready to go. Okay, so 10 developmental areas, and there are actually 40 of these learning indicators or skills that we cover, okay? So in other words, in a nutshell, extremely comprehensive, and that covers all your ages from infants all the way up to your after schoolers. Um, this is a this is a great section if you want to read it. It's all about the research behind the curriculum in terms of all the studies that we read, all the philosophy that it's based on. A lot of detail there to get into. This one is really important, especially if you have children that have special needs. If you have someone that is ELL, DLL, this works you through some really hands-on ideas about how to work with children with different different needs. Um, and in fact, it details it at this bottom here. Whoa, I went a little too fast. Sorry about that. Um, my cursor got away from me. Sorry. Uh, cultural, what does it say here? Sorry about that. It says cultural responsiveness, linguistic responsiveness, disability, suspected delays, and special needs. That's a lot. Um, so what I would encourage you to do is if you have any children that fall in these categories, that I would definitely take a look at this. The section on cultural responsiveness is extremely important for all of you. Um, because every child, regardless, comes from a different cultural background. So this helps you to integrate cultural backgrounds to in, gives you good ideas about how to do that in your program. And there are a lot of links you're going to find through this guide that you can utilize too. Um, here's another piece of another idea of something that we provide. This is an all about my weekend. So this is a report that you could use on a Monday, you could have them fill it out when they come in. You could give it to them on a Friday and say, hey, I want you to fill this out because we all know when Monday comes, whatever went on that weekend is gonna definitely affect that child. So we have a copy of this available in this section of the user's guide in English and in Spanish that you're welcome to download and use in your, in your program. Um, so again, this just goes on and there's a section that has some really great links to, for instance, Parent Hub has some really great links about or information about specific disabilities. There are so many different ones out there that you will find in our user's guide, lots of hot links that you can click on that will take you to other documentation, videos. It might be one of our recorded uh, webinars that would be very helpful for you. And then in this section, we talk about your day. So your day is, I'm sure, crazy from morning until night, but this is to help you. Um, just, just incorporate gee whiz. So gee whiz is not something that's going to take from six o'clock in the morning until six o'clock at night. It's a foundation for your day upon which you can build. Uh, there's going to be times where you're going to have maybe a group experience. There's going to be times when you set up materials for the children to choose from on their own. There's going to be times when you might be inside. There's times when you might be outside. So this talks a lot about how Gee Whiz is a foundation, and you're going to build upon that. And then on the next page, we talk about free play. Free play is so important. Children need time to play. They need time to explore, and that is also a needs to be, as you know, a big part of your day. And we also do something in the Gee Whiz curriculum you may not be familiar with, which is called guided play. Guided play is where you're setting up the environment for learning, but you're not necessarily telling the children what to do. And we'll talk about that when we look at the lesson plans. Um, there's a good article by the NAEYC that we've showcased here that you can click on about what exactly guided play is and how you can support guided play in your curriculum. Um, but this talks a lot about how we do that in the Gee Whiz curriculum with different tools that we have, our open-ended questions, um, and our hands-on experiences. So just so that you know that's there. Uh, we have a daily schedule, talking about setting up a daily schedule. We have a sample one here, and then we have a blank one so you can create your own right there. 
okay? So just to let you know, the, I'm just trying to let you know all the content that's included in this guide, because again, it's, it's a lot of content. Um, and you can download the whole thing, you can download whatever section you want, whatever you're interested in, okay? Any questions at all about the user's guide before I move on to something else? Anything I can answer regarding the content that's included in there? Um, and if you think about it and you want to ask it later, just feel free to type it in and I can stop Beth. But I don't, I can't see if you're typing, but we don't have anything yet, Beth. Okay. All right, then I'm going to keep on rolling. Yeah. All right, so what I'm going to do now is I want to go and I'm going to actually show you if you were a GWIZ customer, what you would do to log in and get to the curriculum. And we're going to get into the nuts and bolts in here of what the all the components look like. And for those of you that are actually utilizing the curriculum, this is when you're going to want to ask questions about specific components that you might have questions about how to use that in your curriculum or in your program or uh, feedback that you have for us about the different components. Now that would be a great thing to do. It will really help us out because a lot of, the, I'm going to explain that, but a lot of the components that have come about have actually come about from feedback from our customers. So if you were a GWIS customer, and those of you that are know, all you're going to do is go to login, and I'm going to type in, and your login is going to be your email, and then you're going to have a password which you set up, and hopefully I remember mine. <laughs> and you'll see that this changes a little bit up here, and now you have something called a member portal. Um, this is where you can update things about your account, Let's say you have a monthly subscription, you want to go to yearly, you can change that there. You need to update your credit card information, you can do that there. You want to see an invoice from a past month, you can do that there. This is what page I'm on right now that automatically comes up, the current units. And then tools for GWIS customers, those are free things that are for GWIS customers only. Um, for those of you that are customers, if you did not get the new planning calendar, Sherry, I believe, was working on posting that. So if it's not up now, it will be soon. It's um, up. It's up. There you go. <laughs> so if you haven't gotten it, it's there. And there's a bunch of other freebies there as well, because we like to do things to say thank you to our customers. So um, that's there. Then right now we're in what we call our quote, I call it crossover time frame. So what happens with GWIZ is we post new units on the 20th of the month prior. So for instance, we just posted the August units on July the 20th. They will stay on our website in this page that I'm on right now for 45 days, give or take. And then around the 5th of September, the July, the um, excuse me, the August units will be removed to make way for guess what? The October units. If we kept all of the units we've done since 2012 on our website. Well, first of all, you probably wouldn't even be able to log in because it would crash. So, um, like I said, right now we're in the crossover time frame. So, our August units are, were just posted on July the 20th, but our July units are still available because we posted them on June the 20th, and they will stay up until about August the 5th, and then they'll be removed. So, if you're not a customer, guess what? Now is a great time to become one because when you become one, you actually have access to four units right now instead of just two. So um, we don't date anything either. So like you'll see when we go in the lesson plans, it doesn't say July the 10th or July the 20th. It says day one, day two, day three, day four. So you can really use the units anytime. Um, so that said, I'm going to scroll down and our August units are off to the fair and our uh, second unit for August, because there's two units in every month, is my friends, your friends. Our first July unit was Let's Go Camping. And our current unit that some of you that are customers are probably using right now is called I Am a Scientist. Um, so again, there's four units currently available right now because we are in the crossover time frame. I'm going to go into the English for Let's Go Camping. So what you'll see when the unit comes up is just a description of the unit. And then when you scroll down, you're going to see a whole list of components. These are all the components that go with the unit. Let's go camping. Okay, so you have your teacher's guide, you have a story for this unit, you have your materials list. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the teaching guide first because I want to spend some time in there. But I want those of you who are actually utilizing the curriculum to think about of all these components, you know, maybe one you don't use as much. And, and do you have a question about it? 
Um, I am going to go over how to use it and what it's there for, but if you have a specific question, feel free to type it in, because again, I am going to be sure to have time for Q&A. That's really, really important. So to download the teacher's guide, I would just click it, and it's a PDF file. So when we post the units, the first thing we, we send out an email and say, hey, they're posted, download, save, and back up. Super important, download, save, back up. Reason? Because these are huge files and to e email them is all but impossible. They just get hung up in servers everywhere. So I'm on a PC. When I download, I would go here to download and save these to my computer. If I wanted to print them, I would print them here. Most of these are set up to print front to back if you have a printer that does so, but you don't have to print these. We have providers that utilize this that don't print anything, and we have others that the teaching guide, others that just view it on their computer or tablet. There's a great question for our current users who are on this webinar. Type in the question box whether you print the teacher's guide or whether you just view it on your computer or tablet. I'm very curious to see how many do each. So if you're an active customer and using the curriculum, please type in whether you print it or just view it. You can just say print view. You don't even need to type more than that. I'm just curious um, to see how many of you print and how many of you view. And I'd also like to know if you download, if you're downloading to a computer or a tablet, like an iPad, because you might be just um, storing, you know, on the iPad. Okay, print, print, we print, we print, and save. I like that. I like printing <laughs> and saving. That's the answer I want to see. We print it off iPad and phone, print. So most of you print. But I would encourage you, if you only print, to please save in a folder on your computer for later use. Most everybody say in print. Okay. All right. Cool. Well, now we know, right? Um, yeah. And you do have a choice to print front and back. You, If you want to save money, I always print in draft mode. I never print in normal or best mode. Um, and then you can always print in grayscale, too, which is just black and white. And if your if your printer doesn't do you know two sided, that's fine too. You can choose two sided. So there's lots of different options there. I personally, even when I'm proofing what I've written, I print it out because I like to mark up on the paper. <laughs> I guess I'm just old school. My husband has a new iPad where you can actually write on the iPad, so that's super cool. So maybe if I had one of those, I would use that. Um, so anyway, this is Let's Go Camping for those of you, and thank you customers for sharing. Um, this is the the unit one of the units we have for july each unit always starts out with just a little introduction um, has a reminder to check the materials list for things you might need a little extra time to gather or prepare it has your table of contents and then guess what we put right here on this page those picture codes because we know sometimes we forget so now you can always go to the second page of any teaching guide and you know that those program symbols are there. So you know if you see, for instance, the circle with the number one, you're going to be addressing math knowledge. If you see the question mark, you're going to address logic and reasoning. If you see the smiley face, approaches to learning. So it's in every teaching guide we use has this on the second page. So if you forget as you look through the lesson plans, just go to the second page and it'll be right there. We also indicate if it's a gross motor or the children are using some gross motor skills to let get moving. Um, this means it can or should be done outside. During the summer months, we do try to plan more and hopefully the weather will cooperate. Um, although lately, not so much because it's been so hot everywhere. And then if you see this symbol, it means it addresses character education. We've built that into the curriculum. So we talk when we talk character education, we're talking about four different characteristics, responsibility, kindness, honesty, and respect. So those four are actually built right into the teaching guide and into the activities that we do. Then this page is an overview of all the activities that are planned for this unit. Now remember, this is just one of two in the month. So there's 10 days of activities in here and there's 10 more in the other. So you have a total of 20, which a lot of these could be extended for more than one day. Um, some of our providers print this one page out and post it so that families can see what's planned. Um, we even list our school age ones at the bottom of this, and I'll get into the school age in a, in a minute. And then we're going to go right into our first unit, I mean our first day. So as I mentioned, it's not dated. So this is our unit, Let's Go Camping, day one. There's the unit name. The focus is what is camping. And then you see all these lovely picture symbols we just saw on page two. 
These are all the developmental areas you will address if you do the experiences we planned for today. So you will address social, emotional, language, physical development and health, approaches to learning, music, science knowledge, logic and reasoning, social studies, creative arts, math knowledge, and social studies. All of those that you will address in this one day. Okay. We have a health and safety tip every day. We have a teaching tip every day and a transition idea. So the transition is something you can do when the children are moving, say from exploring together time to outside time or from one indoor small group experience to wash their hands to get ready for lunch. Um, this is our today's vocabulary. These are not things we're gonna put on cards and write vocabulary words. These are words we want you to use in conversations with children. So camping, outdoors, sleep, eat, play, those are words we want you to use in context with children because as they hear them, even your nonverbals, even your toddlers, those that are not talking yet, they hear you using the word outdoors in context, they will learn what that means and then when they are verbal, they'll be able to use those words properly. Um, and then th these are just some other ways you can continue to model language throughout the day. And then we have our exploring together. So when we created GWiz originally, we we were calling, oops, excuse me, I went too, oh, too far again. Um, let me go back up here. When we created GWiz, we originally called the circle time and then we decided that was just not the right terminology because it wasn't like you were just leading the experience and the children were listening. Everybody was kind of exploring and learning together, hence the name, exploring together. Um, think of it as your, as your group time but think of it also as a very hands-on time. So in this one, for instance, you're gonna be doing the story, but then after the story, they're gonna be doing some other hands-on experiences with you. Over to the right, you're gonna see questions. These are our open-ended questions to help engage children in conversations. Again, really important because if you have some children who are verbal and some that are not, which is a family child care provider, you probably do, your more verbal children are gonna serve as role models also for your younger ones. So asking these kind of open-ended questions really helps because it, it helps the more advanced children to think outside the box and to think beyond yes and no, black and white, uh, one word answers. Uh, but it also helps your, your nonverbals to build important um, future vocabulary skills. So these are really important. They are also really important when you are observed for your class or for your Fickers or whatever your environmental rating is going to be, this is what they're looking for. And again, this is part of that whole guided play where you're asking questions, which then may lead down another path entirely. Um, super, super important. So then we also sometimes will put links to videos, knowing that, for instance, a child may not have any experience whatsoever with camping or being in the forest or even seeing a forest. This is where the internet comes into play in a very helpful way. The internet can be a source of entertainment. I love Netflix just as much as everybody, but it can also be a great source of information. And for young children to help them see that when they wanna learn about something, maybe you can't go to a forest. Maybe you live in Brooklyn, New York, and it's not possible to go to the forest, but you can watch a short video about the forest and listen to the sounds and talk about what you see and what you hear. So there is a way to use the internet in a positive and informational way with children. And that's what most quality specialists are looking for. They're looking for you to help the children learn to use it as a tool of information, not just entertainment. Um, so they're in here, you can use them, you don't have to use them, that is totally up to you, but they're in there as a resource, just like a book would be. And then the second part of the day, you'll see two experiences in pink. These are experiences that are more child-centered, more child-directed. You might be setting up the environment, and once again, as in guided play, you may be engaging in terms of asking questions, or maybe the children need help gathering materials, that the additional materials they want, that's your role. Um, it's a great time to observe. It's a great time to do an anecdotal note. It's a great time to ask those open-ended questions, but it's not a great time to have a predetermined outcome. In other words, you want them to kind of figure out how to do this, like this one, playing in a tent. I mean, you're not even necessarily gonna build the tent. You might just provide the materials and then your, uh, your four-year-olds will build the tent. Now, let's say you don't have four-year-olds or your children not, do not have the fine motor skills. Maybe they can't do it all themselves, but they can guide you as to how they want to do it. 
So they're taking the lead, in other words. Um, and you will see, too, as you look through here, some of them, like this one, have adaptations for different developmental levels. Now, it's really important to think of it that way. It's not necessarily their chronological age, because we all know that a, two toddlers are not the same at all. And you might have a two-year-old that's functioning like a three-year-old. You might have a three-year-old that's functioning like a two-year-old. So what I encourage you to do is read all the options we give you. Think about each individual child in your group and which way would work best. And you might even need to come up with another adaptation, but at least we've given you a start. Then the purple experience over here is for infants. Infants need their own one-on-one -on -one experiences. Um, so these are one-on-one -on -one activities to do with your infants. Does it mean necessarily that your other children are not gonna join in, join in or wanna join in? No, like if you're singing the song about in the tent, I guarantee you somebody else is gonna wanna be in that tent. But the idea is that it's something you can do one-on-one -on -one with the infant to engage with them, to help them, to model language for them, to help them build skills in different areas. Like infants obviously are working on, especially very young ones, tummy time, where it's really hard to hold that head up. Um, and so those are the kind of things we would put in the infant experiences. So this is one day of a lesson plan in the GWIZ curriculum. Any questions? Those of you who are current, active customers, any comments, suggestions, anything you really like about the way it's laid out, anything that's helpful, um, we would love feedback. But and those of you who are not customers, any questions that you have? Um, none yet. And in case you didn't notice, the picture codes also show up in each activity, and that's because these are specific to that activity. So for instance, inside the tent, you're going to build language development, approaches to learning, science, knowledge, music, and social and emotional. Okay, very quiet group. <laughs> <laughs> no, no it must question. have been a rough Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was a hot Tuesday, either way. <laughs> so again, one act. This is one day out of ten. So if I scroll through the lesson plans over here, what you're going to see is you're going to see ten days of ex experiences like that with a different focus every day, and then at the end of those ten days you'll see the school age experiences. And when we created GWIZ, we had so many people say, please, please give me some after school activities, some school age experiences during the summer, and then COVID hit. And they're like, could you please give me some more? Because I don't know what I'm going to do with these children. So we did. And we have a new component that was added in last year for school age children to give additional experiences for them. But these are for those children that come after school during the school school year, Maybe you have them all day during the summer, but they're obviously older. They can do things that are much more um, complicated and require more thought. And actually, each one of these experiences is designed to take more than one day. So it's something they can extend because they're older. They can carry over one activity and not finish it necessarily in one day. So you'll find six school age experiences at the end. And then we go right into our story. So the first unit has an original story with props. The second one has um, a teaching tool that goes with it, the second unit of the month. So the story text is actually here in the teaching guide. The props is a different file, and I'll show you where that is. Then we have our Make It Sheets and our Let's Read Together. Make It Sheets are not color cut and paste. It's really, really important. Our Make It Sheets are something that is designed to really be a tool to promote learning at home. This one is for a counting game that they make with a squirrel and some nuts that they can play it when they're with you in your program, then they can continue on at home. This is to make a mobile so they can build language about the different forest animals they've been learning about. And then the, the Let's Read Together booklet um, is, uh, you would cut it apart, put it together. There's an avail It's available in English and Spanish. Again, it's a really short little story about the unit and then it goes home with the idea that hopefully parents will continue reading with their children at home. So that's available in both English and Spanish. Uh, that's our Let's Read Together. The next page has activities for children who may be getting ready to go to kindergarten. They're more advanced. They could talk more about letters, letter sounds, more advanced math like addition, subtraction, uh, that type of thing, three-dimensional shapes. And then this is our 
okay, we talked about the learning indicators when we looked at the 10 developmental errors, I said there were 40 of them. This is a chart that shows you by activity. So we just looked, for instance, at Let's Camp, the exploring together on day one. These are all the specific skills that are addressed, right? And, and remember, the learning indicators are in the user's guide. So if you wanna know what LD1 is, which was used as spoken language, you can go to the user's guide and you can find that out. But we have another tool to make that even easier and I'll cover that in just a second. So that is for the 10 days and then the school age ones spill over here. There just was not room. We do have a book list. So if you wanna to go to the library and get books that are related to the unit, here's some suggestions. We do write original songs to tunes that you should know, like the wheels on the bus. Don't worry if you can't carry a tune. Children don't care, they just love to sing. Um, so no worries there. And then th this one had a lot of songs, a lot of rhymes um, that we would be using throughout the unit. And then acorns. I know that sounds kind of silly, but there's a game you're going to play with the children that involves acorns. And obviously you don't want to use real acorns, they're a choking hazard. So paper acorns are great. Anything like this that I feel like could be a benefit to you so you don't have to create it yourself, I'll put in the back of the teacher's guide. So for instance, here's some owls and some raccoons that you're going to be using for something. Um, Here's a mask that you're gonna to use to make raccoon masks for dramatic play. We're gonna talk about if it's three leaves, let it be because we don't wanna get into poison ivy. Um, and this was something we were doing related to trees. So in, in other words, anything that I can give you that I think would be helpful for you to save you time, to save you energy, I'm gonna put it in the back of the teacher's guide. Sometimes there won't be anything back there because there was nothing we really needed it for, but if I have an experience that I think you're gonna need something for, I think for instance, these trees were to be taped to empty boxes or blocks that the children were gonna use it to create a forest, I'm gonna give it to you, okay? Any questions at all on the teaching guide, how it's laid out, what's included, anything at all this is one teaching guide remember out of one unit out of well, actually 24 for the whole year of GWIS so two per month any questions at all anything I can answer um, we've gotten a couple of requests about just downloading all the files in one and so you don't have to individually download them, but we are not able to do that yet. But that's the only question that has come up, Beth. Okay. All right. That'll be on our to-do list to see if we can figure that out. I know. Yeah. <laughs> I already wrote it down. Perfect. Okay. <laughs> so one component out of this unit about camping. Here's the story props. Remember the text for the story was within the teaching guide. The props that you need to tell the story that you would need to print out are right here. So all you have to do is print it out, download, save, print. Um, that is something you would need to print, obviously, because you're gonna use it for story props. The materials list is designed to save you some time too. So if you look at this list, it's designed to be laid out by the day and it tells you specifically what you're gonna need. Anything in red is something that I'm just not sure if, I'm not sure you might have it or not have it. We try to use a lot of things you're gonna have around the house because we know you don't have time nor energy to go out or money to go out and buy a bunch of things. So we try to use things that you're gonna have, but for instance, like a backpack. You probably have a backpack somewhere in your house, but where it is right this minute, you might not know. So we put it in red just so you have time to find it. On the last page, if you are trying to help get parents and guardians more involved in your in your program, one of the easy ways to do it is to make a note of these things you're gonna need over here and see if they'd be willing to send some in for you. Some may, some may not, but it never hurts to ask. Um, you can also ask neighbors too, for instance, if you know somebody that might have a plastic fern frond from the craft store, who knows, right? You never know till you ask. Um, this is something that you're welcome to share if you wanna share the materials list with your parents and guardians and say, hey, anything in red, if you have it, I would love to be borrow it from you feel free. You are more than welcome to do that. Um, it's just designed to save you time. Letters and literacy. This is a component that's designed to help you with children who you have that are ready to learn more about letter names, letter sounds, and beginning reading skills. We didn't want to write this in the lesson plans because for most of you, that's a smaller number than say your toddlers, right? You have probably have fewer kids in this in this capacity, especially when school starts and they go off to kindergarten. But still, you might have some. So 
it has the activities that are here in this in this letters and literacy booklet are the same exact activities that are in the lesson plans it even tells you what page like our tent is on page five and you can reinforce the letter T and this is how you can do it so in other words you're not doing another activity you're just adding a twist into the activities that are already in the lesson plans, some of them, so that you can help those children who are ready begin to talk more about letters, letter sounds in a meaningful way. We don't do a letter of the week or, or a letter of the day or any of that because research has shown that the better way for them to learn about letters and literacy is in context. And so that's why we're doing it the way we're doing it. Um, so there's six activities that we've taken from the user's guide, like leafy art, page 11, letter L, Here's how you're going to reinforce the letter L in a meaningful way. Okay, does that make sense? All right, so then we move on. Connecting the, oh, wait, I almost forgot, add and enhance. Um, we know that you're in limited space. We know that many of you don't have like learning centers set up like a center would have, or, or you might not have the space to have that all the time. You might have tubs that you use and bring in and bring out. But we wanted to give you some ideas of things that you could gather if you do have learning interest centers or tubs or whatever that reinforce the unit. And so that's what this add and enhance is about. It's about different materials you can add to different areas that reinforce the unit. And these would be great for during free play. Uh, connecting the dots. This is a biggie. We have an entire webinar about this, and we'll probably repeat this webinar in the fall because we haven't done it in a while. Everybody always asks, what assessment comes with this curriculum? And the answer to that is, it's not an easy answer. Um, we decided when we created GWiz, we were not going to reinvent the wheel. There are a ton of excellent assessment tools out there. There's Teaching Strategies Gold. There's ages and stages. Out in California, I know they use the DRDP. There's the ounce scale. And so we were like, well, why would we reinvent the wheel and go through all of that to come up with an assessment tool when we're covering the same 10 developmental areas, we're covering the same skills, all we need to do is connect the two together. So that's what this piece is, connecting the dots. What it allows you to do is, first of all, there's the same chart that was in the teaching guide all on one page in here. But what it allows you to do, and I'm going to make this just a little bit bigger, is it allows you to connect a specific learning indicator skill, LD1, Understand Spoken Language, with all the activities in this unit that address that skill. And then you can write whatever the code is for your skill, whatever assessment you're using right here. I guarantee you, no matter what assessment you're using, there's going to be a skill within that assessment that deals with spoken language. And you can write that code right here. This way, if you need to assess a child in a specific area on a specific skill, all you need to do is look at this guide. And let's say, I really need to address, let's see, I need to address... Um, I need to see how Jose is doing in the area of making and testing predictions using simple experimentation. Well, all these activities address that. So you, all you need to do is look at the page number, and when you're doing that experience, you need to observe and you can tell very quickly whether Jose is making and te testing predictions. This goes through all 40 of these skills, and this booklet is in every single unit that we do at GWIS. So it enables you, at a quick glance, other option is, let's say you have a child that has um, fine motor control, they're working really hard on their fine motor control to enhance that skill. You can look here, all of these experiences address, demonstrates fine motor control. So it also allows you to find specific activities to address a specific skill very quickly, very easily, and then also to observe that skill when you need to for the assessment, for an anecdotal note, or whatever. Okay, we do a whole unit, I mean a whole webinar on this, and it is there is a recording of that webinar under the webinar training tab on our website. So even now, if you would like to go watch it, you certainly may. Um, but this is a really helpful tool when you're trying to connect your assessment and the skills and all of that to what you're doing in the actual unit. So it's called connecting the dots. Any questions about this one? Because this is a biggie. Um, happy to hear feedback from any customers that are using this, not using this. Uh, anybody who's potentially thinking about it, would it help you? Would it not help you? Yeah, I would really like to know if just it's something that you are it, it, that you find helpful or not helpful too. 
if anybody just wants to respond. Uh, but nothing yet, but if they do, I'll let you know, Beth. All right, I'm gonna keep on rolling. Okay, again, that's with uh, with every unit too. The provider's review is something you can complete at the end of the unit just to do a self-check, right? Um, the ones, the activities your children enjoyed the most. If you did this unit again, what would you change? What would you do differently? This is more for you than anybody else, just your own review of the unit. The school age fun booklet was what I was talking about earlier, which this is additional experiences that are designed for those children who are after school or school age. Again, higher level can be continued for more than one day. Uh, we added this, like I said, during COVID when providers had school age children for much longer times than they ever did before, uh, trying to give you a helping hand. The customized individualized planning sheet comes as both a PDF and a Word document. I'm going to look at the PDF just because that's where I am right now. This is a component that is designed to help you individualize, okay, and document individualizations. In the PDF, you could print it out and write in here. On the Word document, you can actually type in the form. You would put the children's names across the top, and then here's day one, all the experiences we have planned, you would note over here, for instance, for, let's say this child's name is Rachel, okay? For Rachel, how are you going to individualize your Exploring Together Let's Camp? What are you going to do differently for her? Or what are you going to do differently for her during the center um, small group experience, our campground? You might not have an individualization for every child, for every activity, for every day, but this will help you document when you do have individualizations, what you're doing, and you can even make notes as to how it worked. So all of the 10 days of this unit are covered in this document. And again, you have the option. You can choose the Word document and type in the form, or you can choose the PDF, print it out, and write um, in the boxes. The Observe and Reflect grid is actually in our user's guide. This is a form you can use to gather anecdotal notes. You can print out as many of these as you would like. Um, that's the whole point. It's designed to help you record your anecdotal notes, to reflect upon them, and then plan activities. There's a whole section in the user's guide that details exactly how to do that and the difference between an anecdotal note and a reflection. Um, so that's something that you can use again as you're doing assessment as an ongoing authentic assessment. All About My Week is a form, It's um, you, there's two on each sheet, you cut it apart, you send it home at the end of the week, and it's just designed to give the parents and guardians a heads up about their child. You know, what activity they enjoyed the most, where they spent the most time, what they're learning hard to do, what they're trying very hard to do, and what they're getting good at. Um, I would encourage you, if you print this out and fill it out by hand, I would encourage you to make a copy and put it in each child's portfolio. If you do that every Friday, by the end of the year, you're going to have quite a running record of their development and their interests throughout that year. This is available in English and Spanish, by the way. The family letter, also available in English and Spanish, is, again, an overview of the unit, the, th the topics you're going to cover, then it has activities they can do at bath time, meal time, when riding in the car, and at bedtime, and it usually has a song or a rhyme. This is also available in English and Spanish. The beauty is it's a PDF. You don't have to print it out if you don't want to. You can email it to them as an attachment and save yourself some paper and some ink. And then that way it doesn't get lost under the car seat <laughs> in the car. Uh, the individualization web is a tool you can use to integrate a child's interest with the unit or to adapt and um, do some more adaptations for special needs. There's, an, again, a lot of detailed information in the user's guide under the individualization section about how to utilize this tool. And this also comes with all the units. The digital family notes, these are cool. These are kind of like, and you'll see when they pop up, they're different. They're kind of like a photo. So think about it like saving it to your photo roll on your, on your phone or saving it to your photos on your computer. Then you can even text this to a parent. It's a real simple thing they can do to reinforce the unit at home. There's two of these for each unit um, and they are both available in English and Spanish. Uh, the make it sheet was the squirrel, remember, with the nuts and the number cards that was going to go home, and then the mobile uh, for this unit, and then let's read together, we also saw that. There's two options for printing on this one. If your printer prints front to back, you can choose this option. If it does not, you can choose this option, which is two pages um, for each one. And all of those components 
The only exception to that is going to be the story props. In the second unit for the month, that changes to a teaching tool, which might be pattern strips and cards, a lotto game, memory game, could be a lot of different things. And then also there's a puppet in the second unit that you print out and you use during that unit. So that would be the main difference um, between the two units. Any questions at all about any of the components included in each unit of the GWIS curriculum? For those of you who are active subscribers, which components do you use the most? For those of you who are not currently subscribers, which component do you think you would use the most? I would like to hear from you in the uh, question box before we move on. Okay, um, we've got some questions that came in while you were uh, talking okay. about, I really think about some of the customized individualized planning. Um, one question, is that something we can use for our observation as well? Um, I don't see why you couldn't. I don't know why you couldn't use that for observations. And if you're talking about recording observations of the children in the different activities, I'm sure you could. I mean, that's the beauty of GWIS. If you want to use it that way, you certainly can. Or if you want to record your observations on the um, observer and reflect grid for your anecdotal notes, you can use those too. Okay. That's a good idea. Uh, yeah, and another question. The kids in my classrooms are from two to three year old. Some don't really talk yet and how would this be effective for them? Now, I'm assuming you're talking about the curriculum and not just a particular I think so. component. Yeah, I, yeah, I think you're right, Cherry. Um, that would be my guess, and if that's not right, please type back. Um, here's, the, here's the way that becomes effective. So children learn from you, and they listen to everything you say, and if you have children, you know what I mean, because if you say something you shouldn't, they will definitely pick up on that, and then you will hear it come back at you. <laughs> so what I would encourage you to do when you're doing any of these experiences with, with children, and there might be a section in there where you're saying, you know, ask questions and, and wait for the more verbal children to respond, and you have children who aren't verbal, you're just gonna have to fill in those holes yourself. Like, oh, well look, you pushed that, you left that car go on the middle of the ramp and it went farther or it went, it didn't go as far as it did when you put it at the bottom. You're going to need to describe a lot of what the child is doing and what is happening and that is how they are going to learn. They're going to learn by listening to you describe their actions for them, more so than obviously responding to your questions. Now, Twos and threes can use a lot of nonverbal communication. So you definitely can ask questions and they can still give their opinion, whether that's a nod of the head, a shake of the head, a thumbs up, thumbs down, shrug their shoulders. Um, they're always communicating. It's sometimes just a little <laughs> bit more tricky to figure it out. <laughs> I hope that um, answers your question. <laughs> okay, and um, one lady commented, story props are big, so she must really enjoy the story props. Good. Um, my children love the booklets and anything that is hands-on. So I'm assuming you're printing those out and letting them take them home. Um, I use the Add and Enhance Letters and Literacy materials list. The children love to give their parents the All About My Week sheets. Oh, good. So, good. Glad to hear that. Uh, my kids love the props to carry things around. I have a very young group. Ah, great. Um, okay, so that's the comment so far. Just well, and that's also the beauty too, right? Let's say, let's talk about story props for a minute, right? Um, there is nothing that says you can't print a second copy of those out and put them out in your language center for the children to explore. And for that matter, if you wanted to send home a copy of the props with each child, you certainly could do that. I mean, it's digital. You can choose what you want to do. And the beauty is you can print one copy, two copies. All we ask is that you don't print any more than 12 because you're a family child care provider and most most places 12 is the max children if you have an extra you know helper with you that you can use so a subscription to gwiz is good for up to 12 children and one teacher actually though you really could just email it to the parent and let them print absolutely if you on the story props rather than you printing yep. it and then if the child showed interest then um the parent could print although my kids make a lot of fun of me printing everything because they don't print anything, so I know. I'm going to stay with them, and they're like, you got to print every episode, but I like hands-on. I do, too. Uh, okay. Any more and, questions? So what if we're printing for multiple, multiple classrooms? We really ask that you keep one subscription per classroom, up to six to 12 kids, and 
not one subscription for multiple classrooms. Um, because also, if you log in with too many devices, your your account could get locked just because the system will lock it because if it sees too many devices. But we do ask really on the honor system that you order for each classroom. And Sherry can help you set that up. Like let's say you're a center and you need to pay once, but you need to set up, you know, for three classrooms. Yeah. If you email Sherry, she can help walk you yeah. through that process. It's not, not, we yeah. do it with people all the time. Yeah. Um, Okay, we have no more questions. What else you got on your agenda tonight, Beth? Well, the last thing I need to do is I need to take you to the training and support tab. Yeah. Um, first and foremost, under FAQ, there are a lot of questions and a lot of answers about a lot of things that we've been asked over the years that probably you're going to end up asking if you're not a customer and maybe even if you are a customer. So um, yes. <laughs> one of the big ones is ac accessing the curriculum. We have a helpful guide under there that you can print out right here that literally takes you through step by step what I just did tonight, how to log in, how to get to each section, how to find the, you know, everything, all the screenshots look just like what you would have seen when I went through it with you. Um, so again, that was under training and support and frequently asked questions. If after this webinar is over, you have a question, here's the best way to reach us is send us an email. That being said, my email is b as in boy smith at gwizeducation.com and Sherry's is s mayberry at gwizeducation.com. You are welcome to email us at any time um, with ideas, questions, concerns. Um, we're here to help. Under the webinar training tab is where I want to go next because this is where the recording of this is going to live as soon as it down and it takes a while this thing takes forever to download and make the recording so we'll but just be patient it will be there and what will happen is this register button is going to change to say watch and then you'll be able to watch this recording again um, the link to the post assessment and certificate of attendance this is where you're going to go after I'm done you got to give me a few minutes because I got to log out of here and I got to go somewhere else and turn that thing on. But I will turn it on and then you'll be able to answer the 10 questions. Super easy. Most of them are multiple choice. Not going to take you long at all. And then when you hit the submit button, this is really important. You'll hit the submit button and a message is going to pop up. It's going to say, thank you so much for completing the post assessment. Here is the link to print your certificate. Sometimes that link is what I call a hot link. I mean, you just click on it and boom, the certificate opens. And sometimes Google acts a little wonky and you just have to block and copy that URL, this just like this, and put it up here in your browser and click enter and it should print for you. I mean, you should open it and be able to print it. Um, if you have any pre questions or you have issues, just send us a message to customer service at gwizeducation.com and we'll, we'll answer them for you. But again, it's after you hit the submit button. So step one, here's what you're going to do. If you have a pencil and you want to write it down because you're like me and I can't remember what I did two seconds ago, I'm going to go through it slowly one more time. So first thing you're going to do, and I'm going to go all the way to the beginning, you're going to go to the GWiz Education website. You're going to go under training and support, and you're going to click on webinar training. Okay. Once you go there, you're going to scroll down to the very first webinar, and the very last one says link to post assessment and certificate of attendance, and you're going to click there. If I click there right now, it will not work because I don't have it turned on. Once I have it turned on, it will work. Okay? You're going to do this post assessment. You're going to look for the submit button. When you hit submit, pay attention. That's when you're going to see the URL, and it'll say this is the this is the link you need to print to print your certificate. Um, again, I never know. Sometimes Google has it so that you can just click on it. Other times you have to block and copy it. So uh, I I just don't know what it's going to do tonight. <laughs> no, and and don't don't worry about what the score is on the post assessment. Nobody cares. Oh, no, no, we no. You just no, really no. You just want to make no. sure it'll just refresh your uh, mind on some of the topics covered, and then you get the link to that certificate. Is that well, and he, and here's why we have to do that too. If you're in a state that requires you to prove you've had training on the curriculum, 
we need to be able, if your specialist comes back to us and says, hey, she has a certificate, did she really do this? We have, we can look to see that you attended the webinar, obviously on the registration, like, but now I can also look and see, did you complete that post assessment? So I want, I want you to be covered so you don't have any questions whatsoever when you say to them, yes, I did in fact do training. Um, so that's why we do that. So again, that's under the training and support tab. Any questions at all before we end for tonight? Because I want to be very respectful of your time. Again, you just have to give me a few minutes to get that turned on so you can do the post assessment. But any questions that I can answer? Um, for those of you who are not customers, and I always forget to go through this, uh, I'm going to have to log out actually, or it won't show this. So bear with me one second, and I'll have to go back to our website. While you're logging out, Beth, I just want to make sure everybody understands that you can do the post assessment as many times as you like. So if you miss the link for that certificate, do it again, and then you'll get the link. So exactly, exactly. Okay, so I, I had to log out because logging in, I don't get the sign up button. So if after this webinar, you're like, wow, that sounds like something I could really use. I'd love to try it. Here are your options. You can choose to do monthly at 1895. Yearly, $192.95, which saves you 15%, or $53.95 a quarter. We do also have a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not happy, you just need to let us know. If you're just sitting on the fence, you can't decide, you can do our 14-day free trial, which you can click on this button here or on our homepage, and that allows you to try it for free for 14 days. If you're not happy, you just cancel before the 14 days is up and you owe us nothing. Um, that's a great way to give it a try to see how it works in your in your program. If you if you like it, you don't have to do anything. You just continue and you'll pay eighteen ninety five um, without doing anything. If you if you don't if you do like it and you want to continue, I will say we have a lot of folks these days doing the yearly plan. And I think it's because it saves them fifteen percent, and also they pay once and then they're just done. And I know recently anyway we've had a lot of folks who have gotten stabilization grant money and they've been using that for curriculum, which is an allowable expense in most places. So. Um, you know, that's that's one of the ways they've been paying for it. So that is, the, the, those are the options. And again, to get to this page, I just clicked on the sign up button that was over here, this blue one. Okay, sorry about that. I almost forgot, I always forget about that part. Anyone have any questions that I can answer? I hope you found it helpful. I hope if you're a customer, this gave more clarity to the curriculum. I hope if you're considering it, you know, you're like, wow, this sounds like something I could really use. Um, and anything. feel free... Well, another thing I just want to share, feel free to share this webinar recording. If you've got uh, someone else that you know is in the uh, family child care and that you think they may be interested, just share our website and where they can go um, listen to this webinar or just peruse our website, you know. Um, but anyway, we do want to thank you all for attending. We know you're tired. We know it's late. It's late on the East Coast anyway. Um, and I know we've got a couple of people from California, so I'm sure it's still daylight there. But um, anyway, again, thank you most for coming and sharing your time with us tonight. If you have questions, you, Beth gave you her email and mine you've got because that's when you signed up for the uh, webinar, you got it. But with that said, I just want to thank everyone for coming and say good night. Thanks, everyone. Take care. Bye. Thank you. Bye.